For Jesus' voice gently gives me my direction. And I'll follow that voice that I hear. Lift your hands and let's worship the Lord. His voice makes the difference when he speaks. When he speaks, he releases my troubled mind. And this is the only voice I hear that may put your hands across your heart and sing that line and I and I follow one day uh, while you hum it prayerfully almighty God as we open up your words today open up our hearts open up my mind place your words there and open up my mouth that I may speak them I pray, O oh God, that you may transform our lives through the, the proclamation of your words and that your Holy Ghost may come down in this place and fill us with your presence, fill us with your power, that at the end we may all rejoice and say it was good for us to have been here. In the name of Jesus, we pray, let the people say, God will remember you. It's a bad time of day, I know, to put up the preacher. But bear with me, seeing that you haven't seen me for a very long time. Genesis chapter 29 and 30 must be the soap opera par excellence of the Bible. You thought you've seen it all in bold and beautiful. The promise, it seemed beautiful. The days of our lives and generation, etc., then you ought to come to the word of God with me today. And while I'm preaching, I want you to read when I quote the text. So those who can't see to read can hear the word of God. What do you say? So you know the story about Jacob. Let me see those who know about the man Jacob. And Esau, his brother, you know, they, they had some sibling rivalry. And Jacob, through trickery, you know, although his brother had pledged him the birthright, he thought Jacob was kidding, Pastor Fletcher, when Jacob made the deal with him earlier on in their years. But Jacob had his eyes on the prize. So although we may say that he conned him, Esau was a sellout. So when it was time for the birthright to be passed on, you know the whole story how the mother instructed Jacob what to do in order to con the father. It was a family of scammers. I don't know, just a chip not fly far from block. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And so it passed on in the generation, aka generation. So Jacob, because of what he did, he had to flee his hometown and he came to a place by the name of um, Haran. He had relatives down there, for there was his, his mother's brother by the name of what? Laban. And uh, Laban, you know, his uncle, he knew that he existed in the place. Jacob was distressed. He was all alone. He, he went away from his family with whom he had grown all these years, irrespective of the rivalry that they would often encounter. And now he recognized that a real man can't live without a woman. <laughs> so Jacob went to a place that he was certainly going to meet up on villagers. He went to a well because everybody had to go to the well in those days to water sheep, to water themselves, to water the pot so that food can cook. Amen, somebody. And while he was there, he met up on some men who came out and he inquired about his uncle Laban to ask if he's still alive and well. And they say, yes, man, Laban's still the boat. Laban's still the boat. Yeah, man, I'm a relative, you know. I'm a doofs man, you know. You know, his sister is my mother. I'll come from Spanish town, <laughs> you know. And, and while he was there, the men said, oh, by the way, speaker of the angel, here comes your cousin, one of Laban's daughter. Her name was Rachel. Is Rachel in church today? <laughs> you mean? Now, uh, in those days, and it is still affordable in some cultures, uh, cousins would marry each other. And so I remember when I was growing up in my home church in Stanton, Portland, that there was a girl in church that I liked very much. It was before they had Digicel. 
So all communication had to go through the landline. And the bad thing with that, we couldn't be private because you just never knew who would answer the phone. So, you know, we would go to church together every Sabbath and, and in the, for the night meetings. And I wanted to ask her to be mine. So I, 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 I called her one Wednesday night on the house phone and her mother answered. And because we, I was a good kid, they knew my family and the mother knew me well. So it wasn't a problem. So when I called, she talked with me a bit. And then she called her. Let's call her Pansy. You were hoping to hear the real name too fast. Let's call her Pansy. And she said, Pansy, Jermaine is on the phone. And we spoke for a while. And I planned that that Sabbath I was going to ask her to be my girlfriend. Come on, somebody. So when I reached church bright and early, she arrived with her aunt because her mother, a nurse, had to go to work and her grandmother. And as soon as she saw me, she ran across and hugged me. How the blessed feeling that ran through my body. And she said, Jeremy, I didn't know so we are cousin. All those feelings went away. <laughs> All those feelings went away. So because I couldn't bear the, the embarrassment of this shocking sudden new news, I said, Chuck, you ask me, you tell me. But as soon as I got an opportunity, Sister Vince, during the lunch period, I called her aside and I said, back to that subject. What do you say about cousin now? She said, yes, we are cousin. And the first part, she sounded excited. <laughs> you know, she said, when you called on Wednesday night, mommy said, huh, I noticed you and Jermaine spending a lot of time these days on our cousin. <laughs> you know? And I felt bad, so I couldn't make my proposition. And to make matters worse, could you imagine that we, became, we were still great friends, as you would imagine, we're great cousins now. Uh, some two years later on, I said to her, do you remember that Sabbath you disclosed to me that you found out we were cousins? And here the words, Father Bretton, and then Bakabush cousin, you know, her father is supposed to call my grandmother grand aunt. Like seriously, <laughs> you're supposed to say, I know, right? Like seriously, so uh, man, if, if I were living in Jacob's days, I would be fine. <laughs> so, some two years later, I said, Do you remember this Sabbath? You disclosed to me that we're said, Yes, I have, a, I have a confession. I was about to, I was going to ask you that same day to be my girlfriend. I said, You know, someone else said yes. <laughs> sure then perhaps I would not have been invited here to speak today because I would have been a married man a long time. <laughs> but such is life. So Jacob saw Rachel and he fell in love with her. She introduced himself and said, we are family. She ran home excitedly to tell her father that, listen, your nephew is in town. He ran out to meet him, took him home. He spent a month with them, and it was a grand experience. And he was a very industrious young man, as all young men seeking for a woman ought to be. I'll get back to that later on. So one day, out of concern, Laban said, listen, not because we are relatives, you ought not serve me for naught. So tell me what it is you want to work for. As we looked at our scripture passage, you read it all. You know, he said, listen, I will work for you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. <laughs> now listen to what the Bible says. Laban had two daughters. All the people who have two daughters say Amen. And he said the name of the elder was what? Leah. And the name of the younger was what? Rachel. Now listen to these descriptions. I'm reading from the New King James, but you can follow on the screen with the King James. Verse 17 of Genesis 29 says, Leah's eyes were delicate. The King James says, oh, he's falling with me, man. You are on top of things. He said Leah's eyes were what? Delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Hallelujah. When the scripture reading was done, the, 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 our brother paused on this verse. <laughs> you know, some scholars interpret it to say that she had cast eye. Some say that it was just an indication of the type of virtue she possessed. Set aside what it meant. No doubt about it, Rachel was the one carrying the swing. Now it is one thing to say that a woman is beautiful, virgin, of form, but yet you add appearance to it. Hallelujah. Uh, Rachel had a Coca-Cola butter shape. 
and it caught the eyes of Jacob. It was love at first sight. So Jacob said, I'm tired of single. I'm about to get jingle. So he said, Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for her. Man, this man had patience. These days, boys want to talk up to your girls for seven minutes and land it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, some have even dated for seven months and are coming to ask for marriage counseling. And if that and that date are um, available. One man approached me in some time ago and he said that he wants to get married in one of my churches. And I said, in July. And this was about May. So I said, let's talk a bit. How long have you been dating? He said, we met February. He said, which one are the February? Then the one just got gone. I said, No, 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 can't go so. You have to know how she behaves in spring when everything is springing forth. You have to know how she behaves in a summer when she's hot. You have to know if she behaves in a fall when things are going down and in the winter when she cold. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Jacob had a good instinct. He wanted to take time to know her. So he said, listen, I will spend seven years for your younger daughter. He could have done a PhD in that time period. And the Bible said that he worked for her. And the seven days were like a few days. Because when a man loves a woman, he goes leaps and bounds. Once upon a time before we had commuting like today, many of you men used to hop truck with back or to come back in at the night. Hello, somebody. All the way gone to Manchester, gone look for woman. Nobody consider I'm placing today. So watch this now. The story went on. The wedding day came. And there was a lot of arranged, there were a lot of arranged weddings back then. And so uh, when it came on to the wedding day, uh, brides were not as exposed as they are today. And the veils were not as dull as they are today or, 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 or clear. In those days, a woman would be properly veiled. You don't know where they are under the till they lift it up. Nowadays, you don't need a veil because everybody's showing off everything. But that's another story. So Jacob said in verse 21, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. All the husbands say amen. amen. And Laban gathered the people of the village together for the grand ceremony, which would usually take days back then. And he gave the, young, the elder daughter Leah instead. Now, this is where it gets frustrating because when Jacob woke up the next morning, he went to protest to his father-in-law that you can me. You gave me your big daughter instead of the one I worked for. And he said, listen, we can't make the younger girl pop style on our big sister. So we don't do it that way in our country. So it's not our custom. Now, I have some questions here. The Bible clearly distinguished what Leah looked like as opposed to Rachel. And seeing that Jacob was watching Rachel for so long, I'm quite sure he knew what she felt like. And I don't know if it is in darkness he went into her. But because he was an unconverted Adventist, hello somebody, I have a great feeling that because he was still Jacob the crook, that Jacob knew what was going down, but he took advantage of the situation knowing that he still had a good cause to make a protest the following day. Let me talk to the single people now. I'm getting to you. And Jacob, you know the story. He said, listen, fulfill her week. Finish the honeymoon. And then now we will give you Rachel also on higher purchase. Did you get it? We will give you Rachel on higher purchase. So you are going to get her up front. And you will work seven more years to get her. And Jacob had two women. Now the song, Be Man Clover song, I want you and my sweetheart to be friends. And the man said to the woman, my sweetheart can't understand why, why you want a woman, man while others have to borrow from their friends. Now some man can hardly manage a one woman where God give them much less two. But that was the situation Jacob entered. Now Leah knew that Rachel was the one that Jacob um, wanted to marry. Leah knew that Jacob was in love with her sister. But because Leah was getting old, single and old people here today, she became so desperate, she allowed her parents to talk her into a bad deal. Hello, somebody? 
If you think single life hard, try marrying the wrong person. It is better to be single and wish you were married than to be married and wish you were single. Some people, when they look beside them in the bed, then them, 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 them pine say the bed empty. And some others, when they look, they say, Lord God, me wish it empty. So here was a situation that Leah knew that Jacob was not setting out for her, but yet she allowed her father to place her into this very ticklish situation to enter into with, with a man that was not interested in her. And we find a lot of that today. Because people enter relationships and, and they, they see certain signs. They know that there's no attraction. And yet when things begin to go down, so they're like, if me didn't know, you lie, you didn't know, so till, but I never care. So Rachel and Leah were together. The Bible says in verse 31, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was what? Barren. And so, as much as Rachel was beautiful and well-favored and shapely and all, she was barren. And that was a big problem in those days. Every woman wanted to bear children. And better yet, they wanted male children because they heard that the Messiah would have come through their lineage. So Jacob was in a fine family and as a result of that, they wanted boys. So talk up to Leah. Leah have our first boy as for this town hospital. And what was the child's name? Let me show you some things here. The Bible said when she had the first child, she called his name what? Reuben. And she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. What affliction? My husband ain't paying me any mind. He's more in love with the second wife. And by the way, for those galleys who are in the church, some things in the Bible are prescriptive and others are descriptive. Am I talking to somebody? So because the situation seemed to have had God's hand in it, it's not because it was what God prescribed, but God was working through the situation to bring them to what was best. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That was descriptive of what was happening in his life and not prescriptive to say it was an ideal that God wants his people to have. Are you following the preacher? So the Bible says, she said, surely, now therefore my husband will love me. Story come to bump. No woman, I, I, I talk plainly sometimes. No woman go breed. And things say them can't tie them and the man go the same way. Hello, somebody? And the sad thing is that, Dr. Fletcher, it includes some Adventist girls. Yes? And so you believe, so when you give him one boy... He must marry me now. <laughs> yeah. DNA, daddy not available. <laughs> you have to understand, Leah, that if the man ain't interested in you, don't let your daddy talk you into the relationship. Don't let your mother force you into the relationship. And guess what? If he ain't interested in you, don't give him any children. But she was a wife. So it's a bit different, but the lesson still holds uh, for those who are single and not jingle. So she believed that because she had a child for the man, the man of a love her off. No, a Rachel still have the man lock. Verse um, 33. Then she conceived again and bore a son and, called, and said, Because the Lord has heard me that I am unloved, he has what? Therefore given me this son. And she called his name what? Simeon, and she conceived again, and bore a son, what a womb lively, and said, now this time, my husband will become what? Attached to me. Are you following young people? She believed that because she was being unloved, she, her sister was like a matey, technically speaking, because she being the first woman was the authentic wife. A matey and wifey bangarang are going in a Jacob house. So she said, listen, I know that he's not into me, but like what she boy may have for him now, he's going to become attached. And every time she breathed, she did it with the hope, uh, every time she, she got pregnant, she did it with the hope of resolving the communication and relational issues in her marriage. But breathing can't fix that. 
So she turned to the Lord. So when she got the fourth son, she called his name Judah and said, Now will I praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you, single people, when it seems as if you're having relational issues and Mr. Right can't come and you can't find Miss Right, don't get frustrated. Praise the Lord. So Leah became a spiritual woman and that's where she got it right. She learned to put her trust in Jesus. Blessed are the women that put their trust in Jesus. Let me tell you something now. Rachel had an issue. In chapter 30, she said to her husband when she saw she couldn't bear any children, Give me children lest I die. And the irony of it is that she died in childbirth. Be careful what you are praying for. Hello, somebody? Some of us are calling down something on ourselves. And we don't know where we ask for. And God not answer the prayer. Yeah, of course, God not long up your face when you're at church. You know, I sing, God God not give you no blessing. You know, Adventists love pro um, reactive praise as opposed to proactive praise. They don't praise God in advance, Sister Buddha Fisher. They praise him when he has done what they ask. So when they get what they want, then praise God. If they don't get what they want, be a long face in a church. They feel long like God gone wrong. But when they get the prayer, the prayer answered and come to church, we praise the Lord. <laughs> we praise the Lord. Last year, last week, I, I, my, light bill was, my light was about to cut off and I never had the money. And I got a call from my sister in foreign to say she misplaced my number and she had the money from me from Easter to buy bun and cheese. And she just got it back and she wants to send it. Here's the control number. We praise the Lord. <laughs> and you feel good. You must praise the Lord in advance. So Rachel said, give me children, Jacob, lest I die. And now know what sweet Jacob saw him. He, there was a first, now listen to where the boy, the face of the boy, I said to the girl. And Jacob's anger, Genesis 30 verse 2, was kindled or roused against Rachel. And he said, am I in the place of God? He could not stop the sinner. But here the partner were born. Who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Mercy. Married people, when there are sensitive issues in your relationship, choose your words carefully. Hello, somebody? Choose your words carefully. But then instead of seeking the Lord, who could open her womb? Rachel felt that her ma mantra or her, uh, her obligation was to ensure that she hated her sister. So you know what she did? She felt her sister was an enemy. And you could understand the sensitivity of the matter. So Rachel decides, you know, so I'm going to deal with the case. Come here, Billa. And she brought over Billa to Jacob. The handmaid, according to the customs of surrogacy them. And say, let her come in and sit between my legs and bear children. Because what would happen? When the, 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 the handmaid got pregnant, like in Hagar's situation with Abraham. When it, at the point of delivery, the real wife would actually sit down on a chair. While the handmaid would sit between her legs and do the delivery. So ceremonially, it's like the, 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 the wife actually pushed out the child. Are you following me now? So Rachel said, come here, Billa. And Jacob, like some idiot now, can't angle two women, but can't take one third one. <laughs> and he went in, and then they got a son by the name of Dan, which means judge. El is God, Daniel, God is my judge, Joel, lover of God, Dan. And here, here Rachel, because the Lord sees what they are doing to me, he has judged my case. Listen, left God out of your bangarang. She had another son, and she called him by the name of what? Zeb Naphtali, which means wrestling. He said, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister. In other words, some people believe that their problems are just wound up around a brother or a sister. Take your problems to Jesus. When I was in the dance hall, Pastor, before I came into the church many decades ago, <laughs> I, I, there was a, I used to go to Sound Clash. And them time the Sound Clash was popular. And let me tell you, sister, something, sister Morris. You so said you go to Sound Clash, then you have that thing named Dub Plate. 
You know, so if it's if one selector draw a throne, you just drop a big dub plate and a, a counteraction. So it means say your throne bigger than Finn throne, so he mash you up. So when Leah saw what was happening with Rachel, Leah decided say she had go for two dub plate, two counteraction. <laughs> so Leah called in for her handmaid Zilpa as well. Here comes woman number four. And when the woman went in, she bore two sons. So watch this now. Rachel was rejoicing because she got two boys now by her handmaid now Leah called in her handmaid Zilpa and squit them out and Leah still have four we come to her own home talk to Leah we have some single men in the church who are like Jacob they want the whole like girl picking them in the church I just say Adventist man mouth while you're waiting to become a husband you have to conduct yourself well you must dispose of yourself well. You must compose of yourself well. And you must maintain a good reputation. Yeah. Ellen White tells us that it is a sin to trifle with hearts. If you know sin and want the people in Pitney, left them alone. Hello, somebody. And you know, Adventist man mouth sweet. One Adventist man walked over to the girl and said, Have you ever read about Joshua and the walls of Jericho? She's like, Duh, who doesn't know that story? Hear the man to the woman. If I march around you seven times, will you fall for me like the walls of Jericho? <laughs> Sweet Pastor Fletcher. Another one said to, said to the woman, and you know, last night for Bible study, I was studying the book of Numbers. I just recognized I never saw yours there. <laughs> and she's like, 876. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, listen, man. Uh, dating is very much acceptable. But you see, trifling is a whole different matter. You see, there are different stages of dating according to Nancy Van Pelt in the book. We've only just begun. You have casual dating. There are no strings attached. I mean, I talk according to the connotation of no strings attached. Where you get certain things, but none of there. You're not getting nothing. Hello, somebody understand? So there are no strings attached. You know a lot of girls from church. And you talk. You might go have pizza sometimes and hang out. But you're just getting an opportunity to observe nothing of there. Then you have steady dating, which is when you pick one out of the lot, where you see some attributes that you are attracted to, and you start now to settle. Not that it's gone on the waiting in a sign-off, but you have decided to put dating in a casual way on hold while you zoom in on this particular one. Are we together, somebody? And if everything goes well thereafter, then you go to the pre-engagement segment or courtship where you know where everybody else get locked out. Hello, somebody? Everybody has get locked out. But some Adventist man in the church, them a court the people, them get picnic, and then still a WhatsApp the other church sister about them a go up and date next week. I don't like her, I want to marry that. Tap it! Jacob was a crook. And because he brought all of these things upon himself, he had a dysfunctional family. Because when we behave like this while we are single, unless we become converted, it's the same thing we carry over in the jingle. Hello, somebody. So that crooked boy had four women in the house I sleep with. I don't know how he managed it. He rough. Some women in the church, I'm sorry if we touch some cans. Now I get no loving much as we have four women for loving and I will see them house. Hello, somebody? And it was a problem. Because it was already problematic that he chose to marry two sisters. Much less to go take on the two sisters and maid. And things were rough. But Leah was getting the, the upper hand. Because from early on, she recognized where she was going wrong. And she committed herself to God. Single people must be connected to God. No time using the married woman to tell you how to be. You know. Now watch this now. But Rachel was so full of herself, she never had any space for Jesus. Let me tell you about the two. You see, Leah was a virtuous woman. The Bible said her eyes were delicate. She was a tender person. Some um, um, the, the translations use tender to, to describe her eyes. She was compassionate. She was virtuous. She had good wife, the attributes. And though Laban conned Jacob, he might have been seeking to do him a favor. 
No doubt about it, Rachel did her little chores. The Bible says she was a shepherdess. She took out her father's sheep when Jacob met her at the well. But Rachel seemed to have been more caught up, if I may apply the scientific terminology sociologically, in her phenotype, whereas Leah was more caught up in her genotype, what's on the inside. You see, Leah was a natural woman. I imagine she was natural here. Leah, because she wanted to be a lot of children in the future when she got married to her husband, she would have actually worn wedge heels. She wanted to protect the integrity and balance of her home. Come on, somebody. Leah recognized her body is special. It is the temple of the living God. So Leah not just walk and dash it, so she cover it up. Hello, Adventist young ladies. She cover it up. Once upon a time when men wanted to see what is beyond the women's clothing they have to wait until the honeymoon know everything they in a Spanish town because the women say if them look nice and sassy the men will be attracted so everybody in a church <laughs> likes the material shot of pings and pa Hello, sir. cover it up titty a jump out of cleavage cover it up don't sell yourself short because you think a man short. Wait until your change comes. Cover it up. So my man them don't want to because not, not did they see you were like exposed. I went once upon a time. Don't ask me why I went to inquire at a certain jewelry store if they had any diamond rings. And while I asked, I was there perusing the ones in the, in the cabinet. And the man said, oh, those are not diamonds. We don't keep those on the outside. Those are in the vault. <laughs> Hello, somebody. If you're precious, you must dodge it. When I talk, you know, I say amen. When you talk the truth these days, the churches catch ADS, amen deficiency syndrome. If it is if it's precious, you must cover it up. So Leah was a woman of God. Leah would come to church and take part, punctually. She would come to Sabbath school and all of that. Leah spent time in the kitchen as the elder daughter, learning the, the, how to keep the house and how to cook because she knew that when she had a family, she had to know those things. But Rachel was a Facebooker. Rachel was so full of herself, as I said, she had no space for Jesus. Rachel now was hot. When Rachel came to church, she didn't come 9.15 like there. Rachel come to church to show off because all she's into is herself. So she reached 11 o'clock when church full. She too hot to come when nobody in the pack up in the church to see how oh, I just good. When she step in a nice short pencil skirt and six inch pinch toe stiletto and the complimenting aldo bag and clutch with it. And she cloop, cloop, that's Rachel. When Rachel is in church, she allows the heads to turn. She's a distraction. <laughs> but she, she's still an attraction because some don't know if you look for. Hello? When Rachel stepped in, Rachel not use normal ear style. Rachel uses HBO here belonging to others. You know, and as far as she can afford, Rachel does not um, brand Remy Yaki and Canicol and um, premium Yaki. Rachel was the Peruvian type, Malaysian type. Hello, somebody. Brazilian type. When she came in, not only did she look good, but she smelled good. And no granny, and a couscous she did wear. Shimmy York mixed with Kim Kardashian and Perry Ellis 360 degree. Hello, Rachel never just come with her HBO, but Rachel colored it to suit whatever she's wearing. So maybe a copper sunset or cranberry crush or a ruby red. You know, Rachel hot, but the problem is that she never have no Jesus. Hello, somebody. It is very sad that all our single women become so desperate in attracting a husband to themselves they forgot that the best man to have is Jesus too many are caught up in their looks that they forgot that they must be connected to Jesus Rachel was the better look but Leah was the better cook Rachel had shape but Leah had faith Rachel locked down Jacob, but Leah locked down Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? I am going to show you. After a while, Leah wasn't getting any loving. 
Like some of our Adventist spouses, you don't say amen in this case. Because typically those who say amen quickly might just try to deflect, be trying to deflect it to somebody else. So you know, bong span them. Now nah, get no loving, no top it. The Bible says you must render due benevolence. You can't lock shop on the man and you can't go to the supermarket. I want shopping have. You understand what I'm talking about? That's one other time. Amen. So watch me now. Watch me now. In chapter 30, watch me now. In chapter 30 and verse 14. Chapter 30, verse 14. Let's go. Chapter 30 and verse 14. The Bible says, Now Reuben went in the days of what? Wheat harvest. And he found what? Mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Who was Reuben again? The firstborn of Leah and Jacob. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your sons. What? Mandrakes. Now, remember that Reuben was a big boy by now. No. So it's out of two things. Rachel's boys could have been too young to go and get things for her, or maybe them this boy like their mother. Now, Apparently, Rachel never knew if he cooked them nice back there. So although she was malicing her sister, when she stood at her apartment and smelled the nice mandrake stew, she come over. So she came and asked her sister for some and listened to what the sister said. Is it a small thing that you have taken away my husband? Hello, somebody? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Then no Leah no turn saleswoman. Therefore, if you give me some, Rachel turn saleswoman. If you give me some mandrakes, I'll allow Jacob to sleep with you tonight. While you are a single woman waiting to get married, you must not be licky licky and yummy yummy. Hello, somebody? Somehow we are then to shine. Everything we see we want. We must learn to be contented with what God provides for us. Yeah, some man I walk around with the bling bling, the man that's a shine the eye. Buy you one pretty phone. Send you one like a $500 cheap phone card for put on data plan. And boom! Everything locked down. You are more valuable than that. So when Jacob was coming out of the field, guess who went to meet Jacob? Leah. And when Jacob went to walk around, he said, I hired you. Woe be unto the wives that have to hire them one husband. I hired you with my son's mandrakes, so you must sleep with me tonight. The Bible says, and God listened, verse 17, to Leah. So Leah was a what? Praying woman. And she got pregnant and bore a what? Fifth son. Set aside the two by the handmaid. Fifth authentic son. And I can imagine when Leah brought that news to Jacob. He came over. He saw Rachel and Jacob chilling out in the yard, popping style. And she said, I'm, I'm Jacob, may I have a word with you? And you know, Rachel had an attitude, you can see. And she was like, anything you have to say to my husband, you can't say in front of my face. She said, no problem. Well, Jacob, you know, I know that this is not what you're expecting, but I am expecting. <laughs> I can't imagine she tried to vomit up but the man drinks, but it digests, it, it digested a week ago, weeks ago. And then Leah got pregnant again because it looked like Rachel locked him out because she vexed over the situation and bore a sick son. And then she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah, which means judgment, because she believed that she was losing the strength of her womb now. Let me tell you something single life from the moment Leah entered this situation she should have anticipated this outcome the divorce rate is very high in our church today in the rest of the world in our church too many of us have begun to treat marriage like a boyfriend and girlfriend matter you understand as soon as there's a struggle you're ready to pack up and go you're not going nowhere I feel it till you're dead tan in there and because the Bible says until they, those parts, sometimes you see like when the relationship, they're miserable, they, they live longer because God will give them time to work it out. As for those of us who are already in a marriage that may be dysfunctional like Jacob, Rachel, and Leah and the rest, you, 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 you're already there, so work it out. 
Hello, somebody? Seek the Lord and work it out. But single people, you're not locked down yet. So you must make sure that you prepared for your future. These days, young people want to get married and they don't want to do counseling. When they come to pastor, the date done set. A puppy show business that. When you come, you must come counsel first. And then after counsel, you decide if you set a date. Am I talking to somebody? Because let me tell you something. Marriage is a serious commitment. So while you are single, you must spend time cultivating a relationship with Jesus. Let me talk to you, man. A Christian woman's heart must be so wrapped up in Jesus that if a man wants it, he has to go through Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello, somebody. If you want to be a good spouse, a good wife or husband, make sure that you are a woman or a man of God. Can I talk to somebody here? In the beginning, before God gave man woman, in gave man God. <laughs> so the first thing Adam got was a God, not a woman. Hello, somebody. So if the man not have God, next story that now. Me I clear my chest now because I don't know me I come back a Spanish town. Some Adventist woman attack themselves, go get Satan picking them. It is an indictment for you to call yourself a woman of God, a child of God, and your boyfriend no go to church, you, and yet you go take him up. Hello, somebody? Some are saying it's not unequally yoked. They might try to win them over to Jesus. You are not Jesus. You understand what I'm talking about here now? You cannot be in the church and your man the outer road. Now look at my face if you know yourself and I'm not saying amen. Say amen. You must value your godly relationship because that is what will allow you to have a future family that is healthy and joyful and happy and loving. Adventist family too. Some gone and the church. But let me tell you something. Your doctrinal differences can create commotion. Can two walk together unless they agree? You must choose within the household of faith. Notice Jacob could find a woman, set aside his negative traits, he had some positive ones. When Jacob could find a woman, I'm yard, all the running runway, he go find a woman all the way away. Haran! Say, none of that Spanish town, God, family of God. Hello, somebody. You can't find them a family of God? Welcome to North Jamaica Conference. But stay within the household of faith. And don't go outside. Some boy in the church to a look woman. And the woman that they're talking to dating. No come at church. So while they are in church, then they pan the phone and with the things say the scripture reading them, I follow them, I WhatsApp the girlfriend in the yard. You not have no ambition, you walk close. You must stop it. Children of God must keep themselves to children of God. Those single people who are in favor say hi. hi. Those opposing it, it is carried. So Rachel thought that looks could do it. Leah thought that doing great things for her man could do it. But if you do not do it according to the ways of God, you will suffer defeat. A lot of young people, younger than myself, are divorcing. The other day I went and saw one we just get married one day, pop one little statement on Facebook, so I go fast. And when I go fast, relationship mash up. Marriage is a serious commitment. And let us know, some of we, the problem that we are facing, that we, we are looking too much, allow God to do the looking for you. So before God gave man a woman, what did he give man, everybody? A God. And then before God get a woman, he also gave man ambition, Pastor Fletcher. So God got a man that a God to tend and keep. Some man a look woman and I have no ambition. Let me tell you something. If you're not work, if you're not qualified, if you're not have a good job, you're not ready for woman yet. You know how much money cost you put in one of this? I know somebody. If you're not work, you're not ready for woman yet. And maybe the women can say that they make us spoil them. Because you see, when God met the first man, before he gave him woman, he had a yard. The garden of Eden. He had food all over. All food enough to eat. The tree in the midst of the garden. So when Eve come and Eve say, 
Adam, I hope you're going to sleep tonight. He said, oh, this is my home. <laughs> Adam, hungry, eat whatever you please. Don't eat up God's tree. That's God's tree. You understand? Everything she wanted, she had. So sometimes when the woman then want a man, we have things and a bad, them bad. Them a follow Eve. <laughs> But, but I don't know someone, someone on the eye to shine. Yes, man must have things because if he cannot take care of himself because he's not working or he's not qualified to work, he can't go take care of you and he can't go take care of the children them. And we have too many families in the Adventist church who are suffering. And it's our pleasure to help our brothers and sisters in need. But so you yeah, try to help them with the need, they still continue to breed. Lord have mercy. You must lock down until things improve. Am I talking to somebody? And let me tell you something. Some of you young ladies in the church might have made a mistake and you went out here had a child. But don't worry yourself. There is grace and mercy for you. But don't use that to judge how you are to behave. Like you're, you're, you're not locked down in your past. That's a part, place of reference, not a place of residence. Forgive yourself. Accept the forgiveness of God and move on. I mean, if you talk to some old foot, not in a de um, derogatory way, in a de church. Some of we go like the only in a sex. <laughs> Let me wait. I am not giving a license for um, to, for anybody to believe that they can't go sex no unless they're married. But sometimes we go and say sex are the only sin. Can I talk to somebody? Sometimes the girl at the one time she take a yeah, and then at the one time she go experiment. Curiosity killed the cat. Pun intended. And she gets pregnant. She got pregnant. And she no go back. She cursed the man. She cursed herself. And she prayed for forgiveness. And you know what God did? He forgave her. Amen. But you know, you are bigger God. So anything God forgive if you come to fear Supreme Court. So every day you see the belly, you just are nearly thin. And Mark, you know what? If you feel like it's an easy pass, you can't rebuke them at the beginning, but you can't rebuke every day. You have to be gentle and win them back. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. On the other ground, some are sex too, and enough is sex. But the difference is that they're not breed, so not the fish show. So who is better? The one with sex one time and get the pitney, or the one with not have sex but smart for take and trash? <laughs> yeah. Hello, somebody? Sin a sin. Some not sex, but then lie. Hello, somebody? Yeah. We're brad hat and lie. Yeah. Some not sex, but then thief. Yeah. Some not sex, but then bad mind. Yeah. Some not sex, but then grudgeful. Yeah. Some not sex, but a beer malice. Some of we are carry belly so long, we not remember where the belly come from. Yeah. All sort of malice and contention in our heart. Yeah. Do not judge another sinner because you're sinning in a two different way. I the same hell you will have the sin them ago. So guess what I want to say to you? Avoid all sins. Yeah. Sexual immorality and all the rest. Am I talking to somebody? So don't sell yourself short. Don't give your body to a man because you're hoping that he will commit to you, my single people. Lock your shop until God give a man the key. <laughs> Hello. And the same go to the young men. Because our Jamaican culture teaches that the more women that a man has and better yet the more sexual partners he has and the bigger him be you're not big nothing yeah boy a real man can control himself hello somebody too many of these men lack self-control so single ladies when you're looking for a husband make sure say you have god make sure say you have self-control make sure say you have ambition I'm want to tell you this. Compatibility not only means that the man and your God is the same church. Some of them are converted. They will convert your life into a mess. And some Adventist men love to go to Australia. Do you do geography? What's another name for Australia? They love to go to Australia. I just see them coming at the pretty Yankee and bow tie set and the fitted suit them and look hot like our. Then just a look for a woman figure Australia. And then they populate your continent and leave you to be the Prime Minister. 
Who for life mash up? Who for life mash up? If we were following the ways of God, things would have been much better for us. So we must hold on to God and obey his words and make sure that we trust him. Don't choose. The Bible said the heart of men is desperately wicked and it includes all of us. So you now have no good judgment. But there's a God who is in heaven who not only looks on the outward appearance, but he also looks on the what? Heart. So allow God to choose for you. One young lady said to me, say, Pastor Johnson, you're so long, you're gonna accomplish and I get married. You're too picky, picky. You're gonna pick and pick and pick until you pick foolishness. So I said, when you got clothes, go, clothes to go buy a dress, you see two dresses where you like, and you can't make up your mind. You take picture and I'll send to your friend from WhatsApp and say, top or bottom. Yes. And at the end of the day, if you have the money, you can buy both dresses and wear them without any repercussion. And when you're finished wearing them, if you feel like say no, then steal, you can dash them up without any repercussion. And just to select the dress, you picky picky. Then me not to select my partner for a lifetime. And me not to picky picky, me picky picky bad. <laughs> Marriage is a serious thing. You must take time to know the person. I tell you more about that later on. Because some of them just are pretty up and are wait for the beast to come out. They are wolves in sheep clothing. But some might look like wolf clothing, but a sheep under there. Take time to know her. See how them behave when they vex. See if they dash, dash the business of the relationship and WhatsApp status. Hello, somebody. You need to know these things. Because at the end of the day, marriage now have expiration date. One pastor married a couple and went home and came back and saw the man in church still looking at the certificate. He said, what are you looking for? He said, pastor, you left off the expiration date. No expiration date is there. So wait upon the Lord. Your body might be in a quandary, but wait upon the Lord. You may feel like you are left alone. Wait upon the Lord. Because the first man, he got his woman from God. Every church man must wait for God to bring them woman. Come, amen, somebody. And when God brings her to you, hallelujah, your change has come. As I touch down, Rachel, in verse 22, she recognized that whenever she had problems, she was not to fight her sister nor her husband. She was supposed to turn them over to Jesus. So she became spiritually refocused. And the Bible says, as a result, God remembered Rachel. <laughs> Amen. And she bore a what? Son. And she had so much faith, she called his name Joseph, which means adding. Believing that God was going to add another son to her life, which he did, Benjamin. And all of a sudden, her reproach was taken away. You may be waiting for a man or a woman for a very long time. Don't lose hope. Don't sell yourself short. Don't let anybody use you continue to serve the Lord and wait some of you in your attempts to get a mate might have been broken hearted on several occasions but God can use broken things to bring great blessings am I talking to somebody God can use broken things you may be, you had hope in that young elder that young pastor hello that young sister and things seem as if it was taken off but then all of a sudden boom the plane crash but God can still bring you your blessing through broken things. When Rachel humbled herself and sought God, God remembered her and her blessing came. Be in no haste. It's better to be single and wish you were married than to be married and wish you were single. And I can testify, not marital yet, <laughs> how God uses broken things to bring blessings. Sometimes we have our lives all planned out. We have a certain path that we have drafted and we are walking it and we don't want anything to distract it. When I went to college you know, I remember I bought a brand new pair of shoes because my old shoes were broken the heels um, the tip of the heels came off and then you know the sides were cracks so everything shambled and when you walk here Koop! <laughs> when you step in your mind you think how a woman come be a coop coop on the church floor you see, I went to touch the asphalt out there. Coop, 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 coop. 
So I bought a brand new pair of shoes. And I went on to college. And for some strange reason, I took the old broken pair of shoes. And I never had any money. I started on a provisional pass. No school fee was yet paid. And me with my eggs up self there on orientation. And while I was crossing the road to the nursing campus at the pedestrian at NCU, my burdens got lighter. The new shoes bottom drop off. <laughs> because I thought it was stitched, but it was just a show because things are not always all they see. I was so embarrassed and upset, I took up the shoe bottom and came off the orientation and went home. And I said, God, you know some day by faith. You see how I pack up my bag and pan, then come to college to come prepare for the ministry. And you're not, you're not giving me a blessing yet. And then the one little thing where I go for me, my new shoes, you mash it up my back. I was so upset in my spirit. That Sabbath, I hardly wanted to go to church. And then I decided to go. And do you know what I wore to church? My old pair of shoes, my broken shoes. I went to Royal Flats. And I remember while I was in church, when I entered the door, I had to tip it toes so that me not distract the service. Because if the heel ever touch a tile, cloop. <laughs> while I was in church worshiping, I was so, my faith went down. All this big faithfulness that I was, you know, projecting, you know, it, it got leaky. And all of a sudden, I could focus in church. I could worship with a peace of mind. And the devil was just ragging me. Rent is to be paid at the end of the month. The school fees are not yet paid. We're not working. What's going to happen? I had to pray at one point. I said, God, take Satan off of my back now. And that day when I left church, I lived through the back gate right behind the gymnasium. And somebody dropped me at the main gate. And I walked through the campus. And at this time, I was so frustrated. I never tip it out. I just it out. <laughs> croop, croop, croop. Went home. Two weeks before that, when I just arrived at college, I gave a testimony in Vesper. And I said to Pastor Chambers, Pastor, uh, I am here from Portland for the ministry. I, God has been calling me to this a long time, but I've been putting it off because I don't. I never saw how I was going to fund it. But I know it's going to make a way full of big talk, you know. So when you see me months from now, all of you, you will realize that God has blessed me. I told him how I used to teach music at the Fair Prospect High School with the government, and I resigned it to answer the gospel call. And I, and I said it very verbatiously, and I went on. But no, my feet was going down. I clipped it out, and I went home. And while I was there having lunch, some of the young ladies at my apartment left lunch for me. And while we were there having lunch, somebody called. I just came, Brother Carrington. So I said, nobody knows me, Carrington. Nobody knows me. So, because no other um, um, male was there, out of courtesy, I decided to answer the door. So I went there and I said, good afternoon, sir, may I assist you? Waiting for him to tell me who he's here to see. I said, you may come to. He said, me. <laughs> but because it never looked like a scammer like Jacob, I went. And he said, my name is Elder Roy Palmer. I'm an elder at the university church. You're a hard man to find. Hard, a good man hard to find, yes. Hard man to find. I was at Vesper the evening when you said you are new, you haven't started, you are hoping to get a job. And I remember that you also said that you used to teach professionally in the music field. And I was trying to find you because there's an institution that needs a music teacher and has been searching for how long, calling the man, they call you, we call you, take call and see you, and they can't find no mu any music teacher. El Instituto de Mandy bears the name, a very prestigious preparatory school. And by this time, I feel good saying Felby, you know. And they say, I work close by at the Bowman Comprehensive High School. So if you get ready early on Sunday, Monday morning, I could drop you there. But you'd have to get ready by 8. I said, no problem. Where do I find this? I just live right across the road. Follow me now. So this is my yard. The, the main road, his house. Hello, somebody? My yard, main road, his house. So I said, yes. That's where I live, and I never knew that you live over here all along. So I said, tell me, how, it is, how did you find out? He said, actually, the family and I were at home having lunch earlier on. And while there, we heard, cloop. <laughs> 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 
Kroop, 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 kroop. I would say, hey, who am I shut the government road? So I, I pulled the curtain and peeped, and I saw you walked into this yard. The long and short of the story, I went with him Monday morning for the interview. I got the job, started the following week, better salary package than the government, and I was able to have a full-time working relationship with the institution while being a full-time student. Hello, somebody? Yeah. Out of my, then I recognized I was so embarrassed, I had to apologize to God for my behavior. God had a surprise for me, but because I thought that I must always have my way, I gave God the highway. God was saying that, you know, Jermaine, I am going to bless you. Because if you get one of them on campus work, they're going to pay you a couple hundred bucks per hour and that can't do anything. I'm going to let you get thousands instead. But then guess what? You are walking past the blessing in your nice creepy shoes. You are gym screeching past the blessing. So I'm going to mash up your shoes, but I'm not tell you what I'm doing. So that you put on your old shoes them so I can lead you to where you're. Come on, somebody. And I got the job. And by the end of that semester, because I had to pause school, I got a scholarship, a full tuition scholarship. A full-time job that's paying well. A full-time scholarship. Hallelujah, my blessing came through my broken shoes. So you don't worry. Wait on the Lord and trust in him. He will provide for you. He has just the man for you, the woman for you. He has what you're looking for. And you know the first thing I bought when I got my pay that September morning? You know the first thing I, 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 I took out of the, the money? Tied. What kind of shoes? Tied. May I preach because to our cheap. When you don't have nothing and God bless you, you must give God him money. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And by the time I reached final year, I was so blessed that I had my car. So I never had to take one vehicle to Mandeville, one to Nashville, one to Three Mile, one to Halfway Tree, one to Port Antonia, one to West Retreat. I just jump in on my 17-inch chrome and chrome rim Nissan Bluebird selfie and just press it out in Jesus' name. So from Kloop Kloop mash up foot shoes, you know, to press foot. Come on, somebody. I, I parked it right in front of the veranda and my mother and, and, and just perp. My mother came and she said, Jeremy, now where you get care from? I said, the Lord has blessed me. <laughs> so even if you feel broken and left alone and, dis and, left alone and despondent while you are waking, waiting as single people, God always provides for the needs of his children. And just as how he has blessed others in the past, he's blessing people today. Wait upon the Lord. God will remember you. Don't sell short. Don't you go out there and allow anybody to use you and refuse you. Don't you try to attract people by what you put on. Attract them by the love that you have for God. Attract them by the virtuous attributes that you possess. Because when God provides your man, young lady, you have a good man. And when God provides your woman, young man, you have a good woman. In Jesus' name.